Today's episode of Liberty's Kids. As of two months ago, we are the United States of America. There will be no turning back from that. He's a spy! You're a spy! Every kind of service necessary to the cause of freedom becomes honorable by being necessary. City is teeming with His Majesty's troops. The tension here is excruciating. It has been over a year since the rebellion began, and General Washington has been retreating from Manhattan as it burns behind him. Still, this beautiful autumn evening finds me full of hope. Congress has appointed a committee to meet with Admiral Howe, commander of His Majesty's Navy. Their subject, peace. This esteemed committee is composed of Mr. John Adams, Mr. Edward Rutledge of South Carolina, and, not surprisingly, our own Dr. Benjamin Franklin. Oh. My prayers, dear mother, are with them. instruments that will forge a great peace between ourselves and Britain, much as a father might help to solve an argument between a mother and her adult child who has moved away from the family. We are on a fool's errand. <laughs> Gentlemen, I am honored by your presence. I trust you will find the accommodations to your liking. It is my belief that Admiral Howe has not been given the power to offer us anything. It is also my belief that we must not offer him anything. Don't shut the window. We shall be suffocated. But the evening air! By cold, Doctor! The air within this chamber will soon be, and indeed is now, worse than that out of doors. Come, I'll convince you. I believe you're not acquainted with my theory of colds. I have read of your theory, but I've always thought it incorrect. Nay, my friend, air that is cold when one breathes it in becomes warm in the lungs. See, my breath is warm. Yes, I see. It will soon be widely recognized as a truism. Cold air, in fact, is a benefit to a man suffering from the common cold. And the proof is in the pudding. At least when Howe accepts our credentials, he'll be recognizing us as ambassadors from the United States, a nation separate from Britain. Do you think General Washington has a chance to win back New York? No idea. But if I was 40 years younger, I'd sign up to help him. 30 even. 20. 10. 
there's nothing exciting happening here. I know. <gasps> A worm! <gasps> hmm. I do wish Dr. Franklin had let us go with him to Staten Island. Oh. Uh, leave me alone! Take your hands off me! Look! Uh, 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 Why is no one helping the man? Uh, 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 don't do it, son! My wife! <gasps> my children! Uh, I have to try. Uh, uh, you do, and you'll end up on a British man of war like him! What do you mean, sir? Ain't ye heard of impressment? They're kidnapping him, forcing him to join the English Navy. <gasps> you lads will be next if you don't leave this place now. Now, oh, the squirt can probably stay. I doubt they'll be wanting him. Ah. I'm staying. There's an important story here. Young'uns. What? Won't it be hard to make deadline filing your story from a British ship? My friends, I'm afraid I must side with the lady on this issue. Oh, you must? Who are you? Oui, who are you? I'm a school teacher. My name's Nathan Hale. Over there! <gasps> After them! Run! In here! That was quick thinking. What's your name? Henri Lefebvre, Patriot. Always a pleasure to meet a fellow Patriot. I am Miss Sarah Phillips. I am honored, Miss Phillips. Oh, brother. Mr. Hale, it is a pleasure to meet a man of such high breeding. A rare pleasure. So, Nathan, what's a highly bred school teacher doing wandering around the docks in wartime? One never knows where one might find a job. What do you teach, Mr. Hale? Why, I teach... I cannot lie to a lady such as yourself, Miss Phillips. I am in the employ of General George Washington. I knew it was something like that. You will, of course, repeat that to no one, as my mission is quite secret. He's a spy! You're a spy! I must embrace you! <laughs> I'm a journalist, Nathan. What's your mission? I won't publish till you complete it. I'm sorry. I've told you too much already. I must go. I must say I am shocked that a man of your station would take on such a vile duty as spying. It is a role most unworthy of a gentleman. I know many believe that, Miss Phillips. But every kind of service necessary to the cause of freedom becomes honorable by being necessary. You are, I assume, aware of the penalty for spying? Should you be caught? I am. It is death by hanging. A shameful death, surely. Painful, too. Nevertheless, for a year I have been attached to the army and have not rendered any material service. This shall be my service. Good day, and God be with you all. Wherever this Nathan Hale goes, I go. I regret, gentlemen, that I am unable to accept your credentials. That would mean the king agrees that his colonies are an independent what? nation. <sighs> John. However, His Majesty has generously permitted me to offer a full pardon to any and all colonists who swear allegiance to Britain. Admiral Howe, as of two months ago, we are the United States of America. There will be no turning back from that. No turning back. Gentlemen, I've come to love this land. I feel for America as for a brother, and if America should fall, I would lament its loss like that of a brother. We will do our best to save your lordship from that pain. So far, so good. 
he has no idea we're watching him. Finally, he's going to do some spying. That British ship is sending men to meet him. Perhaps it has something to do with his horrid burning of New York City. Or maybe he's pretending to be a British agent. Nathan is a double agent. Maybe he's a better spy than I thought. Hello, Patriots! Oh, no. He couldn't see the warship. He must have thought they were Americans. Run, Nathan! Run for the woods! James, no! Remember what might happen if the British Navy catches you? Nathan! James, you shouldn't be here. Are these? General Al, sir, we captured them at Flushing Bay. We found these, hidden in the soles of this one's shoes. That one's in a foreign language, sir. I am grateful for your help, Sailor. Yes, sir. It is, in fact, in Latin, and contains information about the placement of His Majesty's troops. Useless information, 10 days old, which does nothing to alter the fact that you, sir, are a spy. What is your name? Sir, I am Captain Nathan Hale of the Continental Army of the United States of America. What is your mission? Sir, I was sent by General George Washington to gain whatever intelligence I could concerning the position and strength of our opponent's forces in New York. Well. Captain Hale, you have failed in your mission, utterly. I have, sir, but there are better men who will succeed. Forgive me, General, but one day soon you will have to take your leave of this fine mansion on the bay. And you, are you a spy too? No, sir. We found this on him, General. A journalist for Dr. Franklin. Go, return to our friend. Excuse me, General, but I want to stay here to report this man's story. Leave now, young man, while you still can. I think the American public ought to know how King George deals with spies. You don't have anything to hide, do you, General? <laughs> We give you our permission to write your story. We will now pass sentence on this spy. Oh, Sarah, what are we going to do? Find James. Who knows what they plan for him? A horseman. It might be a redcoat or a thief. Come on. No. Come, hide. We must take the chance. We have no choice. Sir! Rider! Captain Nathan Hale, for the crime of spying against His Majesty King George III, I sentence you to be hanged this very morning. Hail? Yes, sir. Rise and follow me. Now! You too, 
journalist. down after three or four years at sea. Bless you, sir. The United States thanks you. Leave me alone. Let me go. Let him go, please. And why should we let this little rebel go? Because they are going to be He is my fiancé. What's a high-class miss like you doing with a scruffy yank like him? He's actually quite gracious and cultured when you get to know him. Him? Certainly. And my James does plan to join His Majesty's Navy. He does? But he must wait until we're married. It's very hush-hush, with all the tension in the city. Can you imagine what the rebels would do to him if they knew he was to marry an English girl and join the British Navy? James loves our king so much. He's dying to join up, but he knows he must wait. Just a little longer, dearest. Hold on just a little bit longer. She telling the truth? Yes, she's my fiance. We are very much in love. Please, sir, don't take my love away from me. Not now. Not after all we've been through. Please. <laughs> Go on, then. Far be it from me to intrude on the course of true love. Good luck, miss. You too, laddie. <clears throat> See at sea! Thank you, sirs. Thank you ever so much. Oh, young love. I'm waiting for a thank you from you. I think I'm gonna be sick first. Hmm. Please release my hand. That's the easiest thing anyone's ever asked me to do. So, when is the big day? Listen, I have bad news. As you duly warn, I fear I am of too frank and open a temper to act successfully the part of spy. I hope you can forgive me for trying. And as for the method of my death, take courage and be not ashamed. I die proud, I die free, I die an American. Your loving brother, Nathan. Give me that. <sighs> the rebels should never know they had a man in their army who could die with so much firmness. Are there other letters? Sir, I request to see a clergyman, please. Request denied. Sir, I request a Bible, please. Request denied. In the name of... Quiet! Guards! Have any last words? I do, sir. Speak them now. It is the duty of any good soldier to obey any order from his commander in chief. I have obeyed an order and I am here. I am ready. To my foe, you soldiers of Britain, my brothers, I say, may you be as ready as I to meet your end in whatever shape it might appear. 
to my countrymen, old and young, I say, let us never lay down our arms until we obtain our independence. If I had 10,000 lives, I would lay them all down if called to it in defense of our glorious new nation, in defense of freedom. Freedom! I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. this story. He knows Nathan's hanging will lower American spirits. I'm not going to play his game. The general does not know Nathan, does not know America, and most certainly does not know you. Let us remember Nathan's spirit, his dignity, and his courage. And let us tell others of the same. His words, Nathan's words, will be a weapon in defense of his cause, our cause, freedom. But only if you write them, James. And we will need weapons now that we know the British have no interest in making peace. James, you must write this story. I'll make him write it. I shall help you. Nathan Hale did not die in vain. Surely it is our responsibility to search out the seeds of victory in defeat, in failure, and even in death. Dr. Franklin, will you do me a favor? What's that, my boy? Make sure my friend General Howe gets the first copy of this. That I will, James. That I will.